Hello friends, I am Amir Anu Nizami and today we are going to study the MATLAB code for the distribution of bending stresses along the thickness of a beam. So how to write the MATLAB code? We will see, just before that we will see the theory behind the bending stresses. So let's see what are the basic of the bending stresses. So we know that a pure bending where we can say that the constant bending moment and the zero shear forces are there it is called the pure bending case and the radius of curvature we should know about it Hooke's law and uh, in pure bending case of flexible bending stresses derivation we should know that the stress resultants are only the bending moments and the stresses are only normal stresses acting on the cross section and the moment curvature relationship now we can see here it is called the four point bending case. A simply supported beam is there and loads are applied at this position, two position. So the reaction is P by 2, P by 2. And we know the shear force and bending moment diagram, how to plot it. In the last few lectures, I have shown how to plot the bending moment and shear force diagram. So it is a shear force diagram it's plotted here. So within this L by 3 span, initial span L by 3, we can see this is the constant shear force which is p by 2 and then in this mid span at this position the shear force is 0 and then again in this l by 3 span at the right end the shear force is minus of p by 2 which is also a constant shear force so then when if we can say that the shear force in the mid of this span l by 3 is 0 and similarly the bending moment diagram when we see here so in this bending moment diagram, this bending moment is constant where the shear force is zero and this bending moment is constant at this mid span of L by 3. And at the left end and right end, we can see that the bending moment is not constant, but it is non-uniform, linearly varying bending moment. Huh? And here also it is linearly varying. So the pure bending case is, uh, is called the when it is having the constant bending moment and at that position of the beam uh, span, the shear force would be equals to zero. Then and only it would call the pure bending cases. Okay. So for deriving the pure bending or bending stresses, we have to know the pure bending case or constant bending moment where shear force is zero. So we are interested in this region only. So we will see. So before that, we just see that the load in actual beam the load is applied in such a manner that it is applied at this position p and then it is distributed p by 2 p by 2 from the uh, wheel of this loading and then we plot the shear force bending moment there. now we will see that we are interested at this position of the bending moment diagram so the bending moment value is PL by 6, PL by 6 because it is the pure bending cases and left and right sides, we know that it is non-uniform bending. So in this region only at the mid span, it is showing the pure bending case. So for this case, we can think like that, that a bending moment, a constant bending moment, a couple is applied from left and right, whose value is PL by 6 at both ends so that we can have this deformed shape due to this applied bending moment, constant applied bending moment. And due to this bending moment, a stress would develop, which would be normal stresses, sigma xx, and which is called the bending stresses, due to which above the neutral axis, we will see the compression zone, and below this, a tension zone would be developed. So just we can see that from here, a small portion we have seen, taken because when it is bending, it is bending like a curvature of circle from a circle, a small part is taken. Okay, so we can see here that this is a beam, a small portion of the beam, okay, after bending. So this is the neutral axis, a neutral surface, and it is the top compression fiber and it is the bottom tension fiber and it is the fiber chosen somewhere below the neutral axis 
at a distance y from the neutral surface so if we know that the radius of curvature is at r distance from the neutral surface to this point where this curvature is meeting so we can say that the length of ef which is the length of the neutral surface is r into theta here r is here it should be r into theta and gh which is this fiber this fiber this fiber length can be determined by total distance up to this fiber length which would be r plus y multiplied by theta so the total because it would get elongated after neutral axis it is in tension zone okay so it would elongated gh line so the strain would be change in length upon original length and change in length is gh minus ef upon original length is ef so gh is r plus y into theta minus r theta upon r theta so we will solve it and then we will get ex epsilon x is y by r which is this strain and we can say that the bending strain epsilon x is equal to y upon r and y is the distance from the neutral axis to the chosen fiber now if we know the bending stresses strain then we can find the stresses from hooke's law that hooke's law states that stress is nothing but modulus of elasticity or young's modulus time strain which is e times y upon r that is this shows that stress is nothing but proportional to y and bending moment we know that it is the stress resultant which is nothing but integral from minus h by 2 to plus h by 2 sigma x y dy which is equals to minus h by 2 plus h by 2 we will just replace sigma x as its value dy by r from here we will put here dy by r into y dy and e and r is constant throughout the length of the beam we are taking the material properties as constant e so e by r is constant we take outside the minus h by 2 to plus h by 2 y square dy and this is nothing but second moment of area e by r into ig which is nothing but m by e ig equals 1 by r moment curvature relation it is also called moment curvature relation moment curvature relation okay. now we will see sigma x is equals to e y by r that is sigma x by y equals to e by r or sigma x we can write as equals to e into y into 1 by r is in m by e i g where e will cancel out so we can write now the sigma x by y equals to m by i equals to e by r this is the plagiarism formula so now we will go to the matlab and we will see how to this is the matlab code we have written so this is the distribution of the bending stresses in rectangular beam so we will write some command clear clc clear all then the forces and the moments in pure bending so shear forces we know that this should be zero for the pure bending case and moment is 20 kN meter now geometric data of the beam that the thickness of the beam is 0.4 meter and width of the beam is 0.1 meter and moment of inertia is given here v h cube by 12 for a rectangular section because we are considering a rectangular section here only for rectangular 
section okay now some discretized points we have made that we have chosen within the thickness of the beam or depth of the beam some 45 points so that we can plot it nicely and that y1 is linear space command minus h by 2 to plus h by 2 npt because we have discretized that point of the thickness of the beam in such a sense now you will see the bending stresses. So, first we will initialize for a cell and then we will write a loop for it or i i equals to 1 is to npt. y is nothing but equal to y1 of i and sigma bend 1 is equals to m by i into y or m y by i. We know that where y would change for each loop y value because the depth at every point would change. So, therefore, the bending stresses will change with the depth of the beam. So, therefore, it would get stored in this bending stresses of for each iteration of i and we will store that value as sigma bend 1. So therefore, finally, sigma bending stress would be we will make it to the store it in a cell to mat format and then we will normalize it with the maximum value of the sigma so that it would be within the range of 0 to 1. The normal normalized bending stresses would be the absolute value of this sigma bending stress upon maximum bending stress. Now we will see the results plot and we will write the plot command for that and we will see the plot. So we will click on and we will get this plot. Here. So this is the pending stress plot that above 0 we can see this would be in compression and below this region it would be in tension. So, the arrow is showing that it is tensile below and top it is in compression which we have seen in the slides. So, this is the code for the bending stresses and we have seen how to plot this bending stress. Thank you.